And welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. After the disastrous crash of the last episode, decided that perhaps trying to launch from the ground an inter interplanetary mission is not necessarily the right way to go. And so, I'm going to take shameless advantage of a stock item on here, the Space Station Core. and build a launch vehicle that can get this into a decent, respectable orbit, an accessible orbit, add things to the space station, and from the space station, the interplanetary flights will be launched from there. So, I'm going to get to work on designing this. I know there's going to be a lot of trial and error and futzing around, and so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and do my design work off camera and then I will uh, review the design once I'm finished. And so I'll be back. Alright, I'm back after about a half an hour of fiddling with this and that and tweaking things. I've come up with what I think should be a reasonably good launch vehicle. First up, I've modified the station core. It came with uh, this docking node with uh, five docking ports on it, four around the sides and one on the end, and another docking node up here. At the top there is this circular battery thing and then six more batteries around the outside with the two Gigantor solar panels. I added two of the large RCS tanks and RCS thrusters to it and I also added four of these wide beam floodlights so that uh, the docking ports can be nicely illuminated during a docking procedure. And for the booster, I decided on something a little different. Instead of putting a decoupler here or, or a stack separator or something like that, what I did was I took advantage of the fact that there's a docking port here and I put another docking port at the top end of this booster stage. That way, in the event that the booster stage ends up remaining in orbit after the station is deployed, the docking port will allow another ship to come up there and dock with it so that it can then be deorbited. And for that matter, if it still has a significant amount of fuel in it when it gets stationed in position, I'll probably just go ahead and leave it docked. Other than that, we've got a fairly simple basic design here. Uh, three of the large fuel tanks and a set of six boosters around the side arranged with asparagus type staging, which means that these two boosters, this one and its opposite number will go first, and then this one and this one will go, and then this one and this one, and finally these two will separate. All with uh, fuel lines feeding everywhere it needs to be and so on. So, now that this thing seems to be ready, let's launch it. Aim for a, uh, say, a 100 kilometer orbit and get this thing in gear. All right, we have Malzar Kerman and Kenwick Kerman and the pilot piloting the uh, space station. They're uh, riding in this little uh, two-man lander can. And so, let's crank up our SAS and throttle up and let's go. So far so good. I like the fact that they built Laxbane into this version. First stages are going in just a few seconds. Let's have our resources activated so we can see what we've got. Second two boosters are about to go.
Okay, our third set will be going soon. Well, maybe not too soon, but we seem to be flying straight and true. There doesn't seem to be any tendency to spin or anything like that. The central tanks are still full. And we won't need to do the gravity turn until this last set of boosters go. Gaining decent velocity. little bit of wobble. I'm thinking lock the gimbals. And we can get rid of that gimbal induced wobble that way. Alright, now Begin our gravity turn. We need to be pitching over quite a bit more here. In fact, let's have a look at our apoapsis cut. Oh, perfect. Right there at 100 kilometers. 101. Okay, that's good. Let's uh, put in a maneuver node. And plan a maneuver to get an orbit going here. Seventy-eight. Okay, ninety-four and a hundred and eight. I'm going to go with that. That's a good start. And we can do for refinements on the circularization later. All right, now. Now we have our marker. An estimated burn time of fifty-one seconds. And we'll be burning in 50-something seconds, so I need to get into position. And we burn. A little less than full thrust, I think. Looks to me like this thing is going to have fuel left, which is fine. Might even just leave it there as a uh, fuel tank and bring ships up to refuel it and have it as a fuel depot. How's our orbit looking so far? Not so great. Close and get rid of that maneuver. And add another one here. Uh, 
I? 82 by 138. going to be burning a bit late. Eighty one by one twenty three. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to Apoapsis and bring the periapsis up. So we'll add a maneuver there and bring the new periapsis to a hundred. I do wish that these uh, numbers, you could keep them displayed. Ninety-nine-seven. That's going to be good enough, I think. All right. Of course, another thing I did while I was in the uh, vehicle assembly building was I set up uh, action groups to control the lights and the solar panel display or deployment. And so let's go ahead and deploy the panels. Well, I pressed the key for it. There we go. Solar panels deploying. And let's turn on the lights just for giggles. All right, lights work. Solar panels are deployed. And we're almost in position. Now it's just a matter of warp 17 minutes around and burn 15 meters a second worth of delta V. And this is going to take a while under physics acceleration, so I'll come back when it's ready. All right, and we are now here at burn time. And I believe we've done it. As a matter of fact, I think we overshot just a little bit, so I'm going to turn the SAS off, enable thrusters. and reverse just a little bit of that because it's easier trying to turn this beast around in fact let's have a look rid of the node periapsis 101 apoapsis 123 alright new maneuver node here bring the apple down To 101. 
102, 101. Very touchy here. 101, 101. Good. All right. And we appear to already be lined up. Fine tune that just a little bit. Engage SAS, turn off the thrusters, and cruise around to burn time, which is in about 14 minutes. And I'll be back. All right, here we are at just under one minute before the burn. I like the maneuver system, and I like the fact that it's possible to get lined up, turn on SAS to stay lined up, even when time warping. That's very, very handy. This is a short burn, 17 meters a second worth of delta V, so it's going to be just barely tickle the main engine at minimum thrust. And I'm going to go ahead and burn at 15 seconds before. It may not be super duper precise, but it should be very close. Burn. Accurate to within 0.3 meters a second. Excellent. Let's have a look. We can turn off the node. One oh one seven by one oh two something. It's close enough to make it jitter like crazy, so we've got a good orbit. It's not exactly on a ninety degree plane, but it'll do. It will do very nicely. And now to see about getting more components up to that ship. <laughs> 